It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcasting and interviewing Dr. Paul Castle, who completed his undergraduate studies in biology at Boston University College of Arts and Sciences, then went on to New York University College of Dentistry to attain his DDS degree. After graduation, Dr. Castle completed a residency program in family dentistry at Forsyth Dental Center in Boston. He opened his dental office practice in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and has provided the community with family-oriented dental care for 42 years. Dr. Castle has fellowship certification in the World Clinical Laser Institute, Invisalign, Six Month Smile. He is on the BioLace core training faculty and has presented seminars to other dentists on such topics as CIRAC technology, laser dentistry, orthodontics for general dentists and practice management. He has written several articles which have been published in leading dental publications. Dr. Castle is a graduate of the Serona Speakers Academy and a member of the ADA, the Massachusetts Dental Society, Middlesex District Dental Society, and Tri-County Dental Study club he is also the member of wilmington chamber of commerce toast mass international dental speakers bureau national speakers um my gosh i've been a big fan of yours on dental town uh you you were one of the first 100 dentists on dental town and now you have 3307 posts thank you so much for coming on the show today how are you doing paul my pleasure my pleasure so so let's um what i what i'm trying to do on these podcasts looking at the data it looks like 25% 25% in dental school, everyone else is under 30. Um, email me, Howard at dentaltown.com. Tell me who you are, why do you like the show, what do you want more of, or leave the comments uh, in the YouTube channel. But um, basically, Paul, they're, what my show's trying to do is they're, they're coming out of dental school, they got three to $400,000 in debt, and they're, they're trying to find their way. And they look at someone like you who's been crushed in Boston for 42 years and say, Here's the succinct question. Paul, I got 400000 in debt. I just graduated. How do I grow up and be a dentist like you someday? Well, that's one of the reasons why uh, I'm really interested in helping young dentists kind of sort that out. Um, you know, dentists uh, go to dental school. They learn how to do dentistry, and they come out. And very often, they have to work in an office for a few years just to kind of hone their dental skills. And after a few years, they, they realize that I want to open a practice. I want to... Um, either buy a practice and open a practice from scratch. I think really uh, it's hard to find uh, a good quality practice to buy. And so it's something they they just have to figure out. I mean, you have to kind of live within your means, come up with a budget and and look and see, you know, what are my opportunities out there in the marketplace? Trying to start a scratch practice, I think is very difficult, especially in the Boston area because a lot of uh, competition. So that's that's really um, something they have to look at. And um, you know, I've talked to some young dentists, and they're ready to take the plunge. Somehow they, they manage it uh, to meet their obligations, but also try to uh, make a living in buying a practice. And uh, I think that's really the way to go for a lot of young dentists. So Massachusetts has two dental schools, Boston University and Tufts? They actually have three. What's the third one? You have Well, you have Harvard, and you have... Uh, Tufts and you have uh, Boston University of course so you have three dental schools in the what, area what are, what are their class sizes well I think um, you know Harvard's the smallest I'm not sure on the class size but I think you know Tufts probably has around a couple hundred maybe more uh, you have a few more in Boston University probably around a hundred some odd students there so you have a lot of people coming out and you know it's difficult there are a lot of uh, docs go to corporate to kind of hone their skill and try to figure out who they are what they want to do and I, uh, I did a lecture recently, uh, and I had uh, some young dentists come up, and you know they, they really at a loss. They really don't know too much about business. I mean, because they don't teach a business in dental school. They know very little about the de- dental business, never mind even running a business. And so they very often don't really know what they don't know. They, you know, they get into practice and they realize, boy, it's a lot more expensive than I thought it was, and it's a lot more work than I thought it was. They don't realize uh, we dentists kind of wear many hats in the course of a day, whether that's in charge of marketing and sales and HR or, or IT. Or, there's a lot of different things you have to do in, in running an office. So I think that's overwhelming for a, lot of, for a lot of dentists. And so I see my role at my point in my career right now is, is trying to lecture, these, um, lecture to these young um, dental students to hone down and have them understand the business concepts that they need to have going forward to be profitable because they come in um, they have no concept of expenses they have no concept of what how to manage a business 
And so I see myself coming on board and, and trying to educate them in how to run a business and how to look at the bottom line, how to run a profit and loss statement and really, you know, run their business based on what they're doing income wise. And, you know, I've always lived in an aquarium, so, you know, everything I did right, everything I did wrong. I always liked living in an aquarium because you got so many townies like you to tell me, hey, Howard, that is absolutely wrong. Or, hey, try this. It's really it's really helps when you post on downtown. A lot of dentists email me a question I'm like, well, why, why do you want my opinion? You're in Boston. Why don't you post that on Dentaltown? And maybe there's more local information. There's other experts. But what I did, if you look at my darkest secrets, um, my dental office is 31 years old. But my management team, they're all been there 20 years. So I spent mm -hmm. 11 years you know, running around, trying all these different things. And what really was a game changer for me is I bought my first laptop and I went to ASU and signed up for the evening MBA program. And it was uh, two classes a trimester for six trimesters, two years. And I took there and I, I took all the notes that applied to my dental office and worked on implementing those two things every trimester. I eventually made the 30 day dental MBA, which is for free on YouTube, on Dentaltown, even the iTunes audio podcast. But the business of dentistry, that, that's the game changer. If you don't understand the business of dentistry, you're going to work for a dentist who understands the business of dentistry. So you're either going to be an employee because you're a dental operative surgeon in a surgery and don't know business, or you're gonna understand business. And if you understand business, you don't even have to do the dentistry. Look at Rick Workman, he owns 850 dental offices. He hasn't given anybody a shot in 10 years because he can hire people to do dentistry. I wanna get right to some dentistry and center things because um, you're either gonna be a dentist who's high volume, low price, take every PPO and Medicaid, or you're gonna be a low volume dentist with higher prices, fee for service, and you're going to have to be, to, to do that, I mean, we're in the playoff seasons. And I predicted it last week, and I even posted on Dentaltown, that all the home teams were going to win. I mean, you knew the Rams. You, 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 know, you knew. Be, because those people, there's only probably 15 guys in the whole world that could be a quarterback to take you to the Super Bowl. And the Rams have won. The Saints have won. The Patriots have won. The Chiefs have won. And so you've got to be a Drew Brees of the Saints. You've got to be... A star quarterback and to do that um, you got to be a super dentist and you've been being a super dentist um, with lasers Invisalign six months off let's start with lasers because I know what, how my homies are thinking they're saying Paul I graduated with four hundred thousand dollars student loans and you're telling me to buy a hundred and thirty thousand dollar laser how do I get my money back on that is a laser a well, good well will buying a laser help me be uh, Joe Breeze of the New Orleans Saints or uh, the guy from the Patriots what's his name um But so. I'm, I'm, te <laughs> I'm teasing you because you're from Massachusetts. But 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 do do you think laser um, can help you be a low volume, high margin superstar dentist? Well, I think um, basically um, you have to look at technology, whether it's laser or anything else, and you have to look at return and investment. So the question is, if you're not doing soft tissue procedures now in your office and you're referring a lot of these procedures out. You have to ask yourself, okay, can I do these procedures more comfortably with no bleeding, uh, no swelling, um, little or no discomfort at all? And if you can do those in your office, why wouldn't you do it in your office? Why refer it out? So I'm a firm believer to do as much as you can in your office, but you have to do it smartly. And I think comp uh, lasers allow you to do that because it's pretty much a easy process once you get the technique down. And it's the other thing that, you know, dentists have to realize if you make an investment in technology, you have to make a commitment to learning it and incorporating it into your practice so that you can, you know, get return on investment. So many dentists go off and buy technology and they don't devote the, the necessary resources to, to develop that skill. Uh, I, I've run into offices where, you know, docs kind of collect technology and they wonder why, well, why isn't this paying off? They're paying the payments month after month, and they're, and they're not really making any money on it. So you have to, one, look and, and listen to what your patients need and want, and can you meet that need. And in my particular office is uh, we're, we're a low volume and you know high fees, and we're able to make it work because we're doing a lot of work in-house, whether that's lasers or using CEREC and so forth. So you have to listen to your patients and, and look at your needs. If you're referring a lot out, and the question is, can I re keep this – work in my office and do it easily and quickly and have the patient walking out 
happy at the end and result because they're not having pain or discomfort. And I bought a laser mainly because of soft tissue applications because I was looking at an analysis of my offices. I'm referring all this stuff out and people can back six months and recall and say, uh, I didn't go. Well, why not? Well, I have trust in you, doc. And why can't you do it? So I looked at lasers and I said, well, I can comfortably do these procedures using the laser and it doesn't take much time to do one of these procedures and I'm not have to worry about stitching people up. I don't have to worry about people calling me at 10 o'clock saying, hey, I'm in pain or I'm bleeding. And that's all eliminated with lasers. And the fact that I can do multiple quadrants restoratively with these people makes it very cost effective. So it's all a question of how much you can reduce in that hour or 30 minute appointment you have. And the lasers allow me to do this very effectively. So are, would you consider your practice of 42 years high volume, low fee, PPO driven, or would it be more low volume, high fee? Low volume, high fee. Low volume, high we fee. Don't take, we, don't take, we don't take any PPOs. The only two plans we're associated with is Delta Dental and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Other than that, it's all fee for service. Yeah, and, that, and, and everyone who I've ever talked to that actually had really good research and data on the U.S. market ever since I started looking at it in the 1980s, was that Amer there's two customers in America. One is high volume, low fee, and one is um, um, high touch, superstar dentist. I'm afraid of a shot, I trust this guy. So some people, when it gets to uh, dentistry, they want to pay extra, out of pocket, higher fees, because they want to go to Paul, and they don't want to go anywhere else. And other people are like, you know, fillings, a fillings, a filling. I just want to go my insurance. I go here, um, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and and by the by the way, you said something uh, month to month. You know, when you look at a laser, let's say it's a hundred thousand dollars. Well, n I don't ever see a dentist paying a hundred thousand dollars for a laser. I see them doing like a five year lease. So let's say your lease payment was a thousand dollars a month. Well, if, if they put a hundred thousand dollar asset into your dental office with nothing out of pocket, and then you generate say 2000 to $3,000 a month in revenue, and you only have to pay with a thousand dollar payment, then you just re increase your return on equity. Remember, remember, if I do a dentistry for a dollar and and I have a profit of a dime, my profit margin is a dime. But if I build a dollar dental office and I only do one dollar a month, then my ten percent profit margin is my ten percent return asset. So the trick, like Southwest Airlines, they get their planes flying twelve hours a day while all their competitors are eight hours a day. So that increases their return on asset. But if Boeing gives you a $50 million aircraft and you don't have to get $50 million for it, you just have a million dollar a month payment, then you increase your return equity because you have a profit margin, net income over a sale, and then you have return on asset, which is your um, sales over your asset. And then you have return on equity, which is the equity you put onto it versus the asset. So that's called leverage. So I want to get specific. What laser are you talking about and how much is it and what exactly does it do? I mean, do you, well, do you just I, have uh, one laser in your office? I mean, are you... I, I have two lasers. I, I, I have a diode laser, uh, Epic laser by BioAce. I also have an iPlus laser, which is an all-tissue laser by uh, BioAce as well. So you have two lasers, so, and they're both by BioAce? Correct. Okay, and is that still um, ran by KGB, Keith Bateman? No, he's he's left the company a long time ago. <laughs> who, who's, the, who's the head of BioAce? Oh, that's uh, right, 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 right. I know the guy. What, what's his name? Um, I forgot his name. They have a, C, a new CEO that just came on recently. Um, Biolace. What is his name? Um, well, maybe I'll try Biolace CEO. Maybe that comes up. Um... But anyway, so this this is not a commercial for BioLace. I like I'm on his show. I can't even uh, recall his name. So why why are your two lasers uh, from BioLace? Well, I've been a long time BioLace customer since 2003 when I first incorporated lasers into my office, and I decided back then I wanted to be a laser dentist. And the only way you can really incorporate lasers is getting. Um, two lasers because they're very specific as far as tissue interaction so if you take a diode that's going to be uh, very effective for uh, working on soft tissue tissue that's pigmented and your eye plus is an all tissue laser you have a target uh, tissue of water and hydroxy appetite and so one laser you might want to use for soft tissue applications um, 
versus the I plus, which you can use in, in more applications. You can restore teeth, you can prepare teeth, uh, and do a lot of soft tissue procedures because we know soft tissue, a lot of soft tissue has water. So in those areas where you, you can use that, uh, it works very well. Um, I like using the I plus most of the time because most of my work involves doing, um, you know, phrenectomies, uh, fibroma removal, and and restorative. And the dial very often can be used by the hygienist to do laser bacteria reduction, and you know, they can treat um, aptus ulcers and um, hepatic lesions with the dial very effectively. So it's nice having both lasers because um, of the tissue you might be working on. You have a very uh, hyperemic tissue, you might want to use the dial because of its, its uh, ability to interact with pigmented tissue. Nice, and so how much are these so, so how much is each laser and, um, and the payment and the procedures to, to figure it out if it's a return on asset or return on equity? Well, a lot depends on how you structure your deal. You know, some dentists though, will buy both, some dentists will buy one, and I'm not really sure on, on, on the pricing of the laser. Um, that's usually left to salespeople. I, I just train people, but you know, you look at these lasers, it's around 6,500 for, uh, for the diode. And they have, you know, two diodes. One is a um, Epic X, and the other one's just an Epic. And um, they also have the um, I Plus, which um, probably retails around eighty-five thousand in that ballpark. And but, you know, a lot depends on the training you get and the package that's put together. A lot is done by by the uh, sales team. So I, I you know, I, I don't know exactly, but you have to look and see what procedures you have in your office and which procedures you're, you're referring out and can you do these procedures in your office and also a laser is also position you well because um, a lot of people today are looking at minimally invasive minimally invasive dentistry minimally invasive medicine so you know lasers allow you to do a lot of things minimally invasive and people like the idea of you know minimally invasive so you if you take a a small area of decay on a tooth and say, look, we can take care of that minimally invasively by using a laser, which very often can be done with a local anesthetic. Uh, people really, uh, uh, really appeals to people and, and, and their feeling is if I can do it minimally invasive, that's really great because we'll, we'll put that filling in, we'll put a bonding in there and uh, that, that will be filled in very nicely for the next uh, many years to come. The CEO's name, oh, the CEO's name of uh, BioLace uh, is Todd Norb, N-O-R-B-E. I think he's uh, just been new there, what, six months or so? Uh, it could be. Um, they've had some uh, some changes at, up top. It had been Harold Flynn. He uh, stepped down. Someone else came on board. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, who's on, um, who's running the company now as a CEO, but um but you, but you, uh, but you definitely recommend their two products, and, and you're doing a hard tissue too, so you're doing operative dentistry with it. Correct. And I would think we we had the the epic legend of um, uh, dental lasers in pediatric dentists. Um, um, what was his name? Um, gosh, I gotta um, uh, in Chicago. Um, let me. What was his name, the guy who did um, the lasers in pediatric dentistry? Do you remember who I'm talking about? No, I don't. No. Um, Twenty. Now, Buster, when I slow down and look for this, can you edit that out of the podcast? Yeah, for sure. Do you do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, top five. What was it? Let me look for this. Oh man, maybe it's on my desktop. Who was that? Um, I'll do a search for RIP. Hang on. Um, Paul, am I driving you crazy? <laughs> nope. Keep going. Desktop. How do I? How do I search my Microsoft file? Oh, um, RIP. Okay, RIP. There it is. RIP podcast series. Where was that file at? Um, so, so we'll take the cut off right here. Okay. Um, so far in my RIP podcast series that people I've done, it was, uh, Fred, 
Margolis in Chicago. He was a pediatric dentist who pioneered mm -hmm. dental labors in a pediatric dentistry. Mm -hmm. We had Carl Misch, Robert Ibsen, uh, Yvonne Kirshner, uh, Dennis Myers. Those are uh, five guests we've had on the show that are no longer with us. <coughs> and, a, and a shout out to obituary of my other friend, Kit Weathers, who uh, I tried to get on the show a couple of times. He passed away over Christmas. His health was failing him. He lived up the street in Scottsdale of uh, Indo Magic. Did you ever get to see Kit Weathers lecture? No, I never heard him speak. Oh my gosh, an amazing guy. But anyway, the Fred Margolis, he was on my podcast two years ago and he was like, how can you be a pediatric dentist and not have a hard tissue laser? I mean, the, the, the kid's afraid of a shot and then you gotta give right. him a shot and then you gotta let it soak in 10 minutes. He goes, I just sit down with my hard tissue laser and the time it takes you to get them numb and wait 10 minutes for it to work, I'm already done with the procedure. And then moms, mom, monkeys and apes talk five times for every one man monkey or ape. So here's mom <laughs> bringing the kid into the dentist, sees this laser. So she's gonna more likely tell five other women housewives with children than some dad is gonna tell five male employees about this. And he just, uh, he was really, I think the, the guy who really got hard tissues taken on pediatric dentistry. But, well, but could you see a reason a pediatric dentist wouldn't have a hard tissue laser? Uh, I have no reason why they should, they, they shouldn't. They absolutely should. I mean, uh, the pediatric patients I've treated, I've, I've used lasers on them, you know, and they really like the idea of no shot. And, you know, and you're absolutely right. As far as mom sitting in the room there, and seeing us use the laser is just amazed. What's the other thing that's very amazing too is that we use this on adult teeth as well, like uh, upper anterior. How many patients do you think like getting a shot in the upper anterior for for a class three uh, resin? Uh, well, I don't think uh, if they're do. if they're single, none of them. If they're married, they're already <laughs> used to pain and suffering, so it's really no big deal. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, um, my gosh, and and here's another thing. You know, this dentistry and sensor, we can say it, but I, I, aren't sealants extinct? I mean, you're taking technology of how to acid etch enamel and dentin and put in these bonding agents and resin, but you're not. But the, the fissures are filled with crud and crap and bacteria and viruses and parasites and Oreo cookies and Doritos. And you do a sealant, it's only about a $35 fee and half of them fail within the year and they're all gone in two years. Whereas if you pull out a, a drill or a hard tissue laser and you clean out that pit and fissure, you're in debt every time. And now you're doing an occlusal composite, which in five right. years, 95% of them are still gonna be there. Whereas your sealants, right. none of, so, so was that too controversial for you? I mean, do you agree that sealants or a failed ideology and should be replaced with preventative resin well, restorations, which are occlusal yeah, composites. I, I agree because you look at sealants and the biggest question I have when you see a sealant, you ask yourself, is the decay underneath that sealant? And how many sealants do you just take the exploring just kind of flakes right off? It's, you know, the leaking. It's actually having, it's almost like having a leaking filling in your, in your tooth. And so that's why I think lasers appeal to a lot of moms because you have a kid that comes in that has, you know, a small lesion. You say, okay, let's go in here with the laser, take care of it. No anesthetic is required. We just go put some bonding in there. And you, now you've sealed that up and you know it's, it, it's good tooth structure underneath. You don't have to have any questions about what's going on. And that sometimes is, is a big question. I mean, we really don't see, do sealants in my office any longer because of that same issue. How do you know you're really on solid tooth structure? You don't. And when you so have a lid over the most of the pit and fissure, you're protecting it from the atmosphere, which is 40% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. So the anaerobic right. bacteria, that's why I always see under these sealants where all of a sudden right. there's an oxygen free zone and then the decay mushrooms out. And then the other right. thing is the insurance companies don't really, you don't see CEOs of Delta coming on my show. And it's, it's a, it's a very, um, the insurance companies, they play in one parking lot and the dental, com the dentist are in another, and it's not a very good solid relationship. Uh, but when you're lecturing, I, I lecture a couple hundred insurance uh, guys down in Florida and they were showing me their data, but they wouldn't let me have it or print it or anything like that or come on the show. Uh, but basically, if you look at the 32 teeth, there's just six major spikes doing all the dentistry. It's the first molar. You got four first molars. Right. So tooth most likely to be root canal, crowned, extracted, replaced. So, so putting a crappy little sealant on your six-year-old <laughs> granddaughter's tooth of these four molars that are most likely to be root canal, crowned, extracted. I mean, why wouldn't you just do it right and remove, clean out all the pits and fissures, put in a composite or an amalgam 
Um, you know, that's what I did with my grandsons. It's like, look, you know, do you want to replace a pretty little tooth colored composite that I do? Look at grandpa. He has seven fillings <laughs> and they're all gold because gold is the best. And I had a lot of, a couple of my boys uh, actually ch always chose the gold filling. So some of my boys have gold fillings, but uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't understand the business economics or the clinical dentistry of doing a sealant. I just, I just think it's garbage. Would you call right. sealants garbage? Well, I wouldn't go that far, but you know, I, I would say I, I, I'd rather use a laser, clean out the, the pits and, and, and bond something in there. I know it's going to be just solidly. And what's the benefit of having a laser is that I can do it minimally invasively, but you don't have the mechanical trauma you would have with a high-speed drill. So I know I'm going in there very gently removing that decay area and, and, and sealing it up with a uh, resin filling. So that, you know, that, you know, that to me is, is really the better way to go. Okay, so term. you have, I'm, I'm on the biolace.com. And by the way, these aren't commercials. I Hell, I forgot the, the new guy's owner, uh, Todd Norb, the first. Trust me, he's not paying for a commercial. Paul's been my friend for 30 decades. There's no money changes in the hands. But on the biolace.com website, they have all tissue dental lasers. And then they have the soft tissue dental lasers. So you got the all tissue dental laser water lace. And then you got the soft tissue dental laser Epic Pro. Am I, am I correct there or not? You have, well, I have the Epic X. Epic Pro is a, um, a um, higher level uh, machine. And that's one of the new products. And uh, the Epic X is what I have currently. That's uh, uh, It's a more uh, universal type of um, laser, more applicable to a uh, general dentist to be used. And that's what, you're high... using, that's what you're using just for soft tissue stuff. Yeah, correct. And that, well, I'm using that mainly, that's basically a soft tissue uh, laser. I'm using the I plus, which is the all tissue laser. Okay, the I plus is the stand up machine. Correct. Okay, let me uh, view all tissue dental laser products. I'm clicking there. So you got, okay, I see the water lace express and then the water place I plus. So you bought the I plus. I have the I plus. Okay. It and, usually came out with the Express, which is a um, right. lower powered uh, machine. And the Express is um, a nice machine for pediatric dentist. It's uh, less costly, uh, has less power, so it would work well for uh, a pediatric case. Uh, but for a general, general dentist, you probably want to consider getting the I+. It has more power. It has more applicability uh, with, the, um, with the I+. And what did that cost? The water I think it's I think, it, plus? I think uh, I think it retails around um, list price around eighty five thousand. That, okay, that'd be a balance that, sheet number, but but you know a balance sheet you need if you're going to go get a loan or a divorce for your assets equal or balance with the equity you have into it minus the the uh, um, what you owe on it. But on a statement of cash flow number, what would the monthly lease payment be? I have a slightest idea. I don't handle finances, but <laughs> does your wife do that, or do you got an office manager who does? Who would know that number? Well, I mean, I, I paid off my I plus, you know, a long time ago, and, and I actually got the money from my local bank, and the rate was um, was very competitive. And the advantages to using my local bank is that I could pay it off ahead of time if I wanted to, and in my mind, that for me, that was a, a better option because. Um, Let's say you generate that extra cash from the, uh, the I plus, you can probably pay that off within one or two years. And, and so, and therefore, doing what doing what procedures with it? Well, I mean, you think in terms of restorative, I can work on all four quadrants. Very often, you have somebody come in to have uh, a occlusal restoration need to be done on all six year molars. And so, back in the old days, maybe you do half the mouth today and half the mouth next time. Um, you do uh, your um, phrenectomies, you do fibroma removal, you do your peri regeneration, you do your crown lymphening. So just imagine. What about cord packing? I mean, that, uh, a fibroma and a and a um, a frenulum attachment be a very rare procedure, but like most dentists pack cord two or three or four times a day. Do you use it to pack cord? Um, or you can really? use it and avoid the need for cord. Um, since I use a Cerec, I usually tend to like to keep, we keep the cord in, use a cord in, and use the laser as well to create a trough and pack the cord in and just keep everything dry and, and accessible. 
And I'll leave the cord in until after I cement the case in because then cleanup is a lot easier because all that cement and bonding agent comes out with the cord and just um, makes it easier um, to deal with. And do you recommend you, – you're a member of the uh, World Laser um, – do you recommend that to get to know lasers? I mean, or, or Dental Town Online CE, where where would a young homie learn how to use that laser? Well, they go to one of the um, training sessions. Uh, they have uh, training centers in uh, one in North Carolina, one in, uh, I believe, Chicago, and one in uh, California. Who, who so does? They go to Bio, training Biolase? Center. Biolase, runs uh, a training center in each of those t- cities. Okay, tell me the three cities again. That's going to be a North Carolina. Where, where is that at in North Carolina? Uh, I think it's in uh, uh, I think it's in Charleston, North Carolina. Okay. There's another one uh, in Chicago. I'm not sure of the uh, town. And then the other one is um, in California, Irvine, California. That's at the uh, that's home the, office. That's where they're. So, so you would recommend them going to a uh, uh, course at the, one of those three centers to learn how to use this laser? Correct. And usually training is part of the whole package. You know, they you talk to a sales rep and they will, um, you know, put together a package of what you want to do. And they have various training options. The other training option is uh, have a doc like me come down to your office and train you in your office, which is um, a good way to go if you have associates. Um, then you have all your associates there and we can train them over uh, Friday and Saturday and learn how to use the laser, how to implement the laser in their office, which is, you know, a very important thing to do because you know how it is you go to a course of training and you sit there for two days and went how to use the machine and go back to your office now you're kind of scratching your head okay well, how do I start so having somebody like myself come to the office and show you how to implement this is, is tremendously helpful and uh, you know the office that I've gone to they've they've really uh, been uh, very successful at using the laser and how, how does that work how long do you go into the office for it's usually a two-day uh, process, and what and there's a sec correct. And what what does that cost? There's a sec. Uh, I have a sliced idea. Okay, <laughs> that that's that's handled by BioAce as part of the package they put together uh, for the docs buying the buying the laser. So I'd go in with there's a set curriculum. We go in uh, for two days and show them how to do all the um, core procedures of how to use the laser and how to implement it. And it's very helpful to the staff because they're there very often to um, learn how to take care of the machine and how to get it positioned and ready to, to use. Okay, you did you did a couple online seeds. You did one mill in or send out. Let's talk about that. Which one? That that course mill in or send out. Oh yeah, right. So you want to that switch? was a, that was an article. Yeah, that was an that article. Was an article. Um, no, yeah. no, it was it was a CE. Yeah, CE article. Yeah. Yeah, um, how is um, talk about that article? So you, we talked about lasers. You're also big into CAD CAM, correct? Correct. Yeah, I started CAD CAM back in 2001. So was, that, was that the Cerac one? No, that was Cerac number two. Okay, I must Actually, be older was, than you. My was, my first was Cerac one back when it was owned uh, in France. <laughs> remember that? Oh, that's before my time, Howard. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, my God. And, and and looking back, you know, Cirac 1 to Cirac 2 to Cirac 3, what nobody talks about is the quality of it was not tracing the company. It was it was right. tracing Intel's microprocessors uh, and yeah. getting twice the number of processors on the same amount of area, Moore's Law, every two years. And right. <clears throat> they just couldn't design the software to do everything they wanted it to do back in the 80s and 90s because you didn't have the hardware that's why amazon started out selling books because books was the only thing they could sell that didn't need an image and jeff bezos know that as the pipes got bigger then he could put an image and start selling books spots fans and eventually someday it could be a video uh so anyway so uh so what would you say to someone today who's uh thinking about buying cad cam first of all would you would you recommend what what brand? I had that question. I had that question up to me, uh, posted me at, at a talk I did. A young dentist came up and said, "Hey, I would like to buy a Cerec." I said, "Well, you have to look and see how many units per month you do. How many units do you do, and what's the break-even point between the number of units in your lab bill? Because then you reach a point where you have that break-even, and everything else you're doing on that crown is just material cost. 
And so that's where it comes in. You have to decide what that inflection point is, at what point you're making it just uh, making crowns just on materials uh, on materials only. And the other question is, you look at people that come in your office and they ask, I tell them you need a crown. What's, what, what are the people saying to me? Say, oh, doc, I need a crown. Oh, that means I need a root canal. Does that mean I, 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 it's going to be three or four appointments? And oh, I had a crown before and I kept losing the temporary. And people are really amazed when you say, look, you come in, it's going to be one and done. We're going to get this done in one visit. And so that's a big, big selling point for a lot of people because they look at time. Today we're looking at a, a environment where people don't have time and they look at, I don't want to take time on my schedule, come back three or four times by having a crown done conventionally. So, you know, CEREC allows you to do today dentistry and uh, I'm a big advocate for it because I've been using it for the last, you know, almost uh, 18 years now. And um, it's amazing how people come in with a broken tooth and you say, hey, look, um, I can get this tooth crown today for you. And um, they're very happy to get it done because people don't want to come back. So the answer to the question is, is how many crowns a month do you do? And what's your break even point? I mean, we know crowns today can be uh, relatively inexpensive, but more importantly is the power of having it done today. You can go to my website and you'll see people say, hey, I broke a tooth. My, my dentist couldn't see me today, but I called you. I came in and got the crown done. And I wasn't expecting getting it done, but I get it done and I don't have to come back and see her. So how many referrals does that mean? You know, to me, that meant referrals of, the, of that patient's uh, wife and his two, his two sons, and one of them got orthodontics done by me. So, so it really is a draw for people, the fact that you get this done in one visit. And um, I've had cases out there for 18 years, and they look as good as the day I put them in. So you see the longevity on the restorations, provided they're done well. Yeah, and what you just said was also a superior thing. I, I don't think the 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 whole dental industry starts when I go to Paul and Paul says, Howard, you have two cavities and you need a crown and I have to I have to trust you. You're selling the invisible. You didn't you didn't sit there right. and say, here's a Starbucks coffee and here's an iPhone. I know what those products are. Yeah. You're selling the invisible. It's like who is Paul? He told me I need a crown. It's a thousand dollars. Do I trust him? And then am I going to lean back, let him touch me, give me a shot, perform all this stuff? Um, so you know that that that's why I never went into rolling out a chain of dental offices because I don't know how I I can roll out great locations, great demographics, great marketing, building great teams. But you know the dentist is the whole product. It's the eighty twenty rule. And um, so um, so you. On this CAD CAM thing, you would recommend it. And do you recommend uh, uh, S S Densply Serona or E4D um, out of Dallas? Well, I've used a Serona product, uh, CEREC, for 18 years. So they have the track record. And um, um, I've had good success with them. And it's worked very, very uh, well for me. And the other point I'd make, too, I think it's important for every dentist to consider having cameras in their hygiene rooms uh, because as you mentioned people have to take your word for it so I tell my hygienist whenever we're looking at doing a crown on somebody I want three photographs of that tooth I want buckle lingua occlusal shots so that we can show the patient exactly what we see not only that too that documentation comes in very handy if you have a question from the insurance company because insurance companies may might make a judgment based on the x-ray, which is not very, you know, uh, diagnostic. I mean, we should see a big hole in the x-ray. But in this case I mentioned, this patient broke a tooth. We are able to show him, hey, broken cusp, undermined cusp with the, with the uh, intraoral camera. And basically, uh, trust is in the picture. Right. Um, the digital camera is the number one return on investment piece of technology because these people, you know, when I was little, only rich people or you work for the Fortune 500 could fly in airplanes. Southwest Airlines lowered the cost so much that they gave everyone the freedom to fly and they're in Parsons, Kansas and they want to have veneers or implants and they're going to the local dentist website and there's nothing there. It's just like 
Smile Family Dentist, Parsons Family <laughs> Dentistry, and a mugshot of the dentist. And then there's this other guy that's showing up on their Google search, and they're seeing before and after of work done. And that is the game changer. Every dentist I know who really gets into digital photography, his treatment plan presentation closes go up high because they're showing intro cameras and they're showing um, digital photography. Do I need this on here? Am I good here? Yeah. Okay, because I didn't know if I could close yeah, this uh, window. Um, and uh, they're, they're just crushing it. And then their website is filled with lots of pictures. They, these are my cases. And then right. I'll know a lot of these patients. Like I know patients in my area, uh, friends of family, whatever, that flew to like Kansas City or LA to have some implant guru do their implants. And there's guys three miles up the street, like, like my buddy Tom Matter. I mean, I, I think he's probably as good as any implantologist on the planet Earth. But they just didn't mm -hmm. know. Uh, so yeah, so digital photography is everything. And again, if you can't be uh, that, um, um, who's the uh, who's the quarterback for the uh, Patriots? Um, Bledsoe. No, that's the owner. No, not Bledsoe. <laughs> Who, who's the, who's the NFL quarterback? Brady. Brady. <laughs> if you can't be, Bledsoe, he, he used to be the, he used to be the quarterback. It's Tom Brady's the quarterback, number twelve. Yeah, and, and he just reached the, the playoffs, uh, uh, the final game for the eighth time ever. That that's just amazing. Uh, but when you look at um, but when you look, if you can't be uh, that guy, um, I'll, I'll tell, um, if you can't be that guy, then you have to have an assistant wherever you're weak. So that that's the important thing about a leader. You know what you're good at. You know what you're passionate about. You know what you could do all day long where you never have to work another day in your life. But what are you not doing? And are you not doing that because you don't like it? You won't commit to it? And, and if you're not committing to digital photography, then you got to tell your team, look, I'm I'm weak in this area. I'm good at have, I'm going to eight years of college, uh, uh, risk, uh, getting loans, building a dental office. But I don't have this digital photography down. So then you have to tell your team, who's going to do it? Is it going to be the, the assistant? Is it going to be the hygienist? So, someone has to do that digital photography, but it, it is so gosh darn important. So you didn't go with E4D. You went for BioLace. And do you think the BioLace, it's probably, I, I mean, the um, the the uh, CAD CAM, Serona system, sure. I think it's about 140000 I think that lease payment's going to be roughly 1000 bucks a month. Do you think yep. it's going to, if I put $140,000 someone else's money asset in my office and I got a cash flow, statement of income, balance sheet, statement of cash flow, if I have to cash flow out a $1,000 a month payment, do you think I'm going to make money? Do you think it's going to increase my return on equity? Absolutely. No doubt about it. I mean, I can give you an example. I can do two crowns on a patient on the phrenectomy I did in this patient to a two and a half hour appointment. And we reproduced over three thousand dollars, and that was a one visit situation. So it's there. I mean, you can do it. You just have to implement it. And the problem with a lot of dentists is they don't devote the time that is necessary to learn the technology so they can do it, you know, very um, expeditious, uh, expeditiously. And sometimes you can even train your your your, your staff to to mill the case out and, and get the case all primed and ready for you. You don't have to be at the chair for two hours because very often when I, I, I do a CEREC, I'll do other work within the patient. So you do a whole coordinate. So it'll be a crown and maybe a couple of fillings. So you're really maximizing your time. It's all about production per hour. That's what I'm looking at. And so if I can get that kind of production per hour, I mean, this machine will pay for itself pretty quickly. And, and if production per hour is too much for you, at least get a production per day. Get a break-even point. My dad used to call it a bare ass minimum. I still think the only thing I learned in MBA school was uh, taking profanity business terms and making them, you know, from bare ass minimum to break-even point. But if you go in there, I mean, most dentists, m most all humans, they're very much in a routine. They eat basically ten meals is their whole meal pattern. They basically um, the reason Google. And uh, all these people are selling your location days because most people, when they go out their driveway, they always go this way and almost never the other way. They always go up to that mm -hmm. stop sign and turn this way. Now, humans are extremely, extremely predictable. So most dentists work about 16 days a month. So you got to take all your overhead and divide it by the number of days you work for a month. And then your team's got to know, hey, look, man, to just pay the bills, we need $2,500 a day. 
and we want 50% overhead. We want 50% gross margin. So we got to do 2,500, do lunch, then come back and do 2,500 again. I mean, and, and you can't fix that by motivating your test staff with a year in Christmas bonus. You got to do the <laughs> grind day in, day out, day in. It's all about today. It's all about answering the phones today. It's all about same day dentistry. It's all about getting people in. They call in, they got a broke tooth. Come on down now. It's not about, oh, we don't have a chair. Are you kidding me? Your staff is supposed to be 25%. I routinely see it anywhere from 25 to 35%. The doctors mm -hmm. are making 25% as an associate all the way to 35% um, if they pay their lab bill. Um, 55 cents of every dollar is going to labor. Your labor is sitting right there. So why are they waiting on an operatory? Why do you not have an extra chair? Why can't, why, when the phone rings to the third time, why does it not roll over? You know what, you know what the big DSLs are doing? All those phone calls mm -hmm. on the third ring are ringing over to their call center and their call mm -hmm. center is zeroed right in the schedule. And Paul doesn't even know that I'm not at the dental office. Paul thinks I'm at the dental office right by his house in Boston. And I'm in a call center in Effingham, um, Illinois for Heartland Dental. Paul, thank you for calling. How may I help you? Getting him in, getting out. Then you have the no-show right. cancellation rate. So a lot of people are playing the double booking game because you never know who's not going to show or come late or, or have a hard time getting numb or whatever. But chairs are not your cost. You need to answer the phones, get them in today. And, and you, you like the business decision of, of getting same-day dentistry so they don't have to make it temporary and come back for a second appointment. You think that's right. a practice builder? Absolutely. Like I said, I have people that um, have given me reviews because of that reason, because we've taken care of them that day. I mean, someone calls my office for an emergency, we get them in that day. And if I have the time to do a crown on them and they need a crown, it, get done, it gets done that day. Because think about it, most people come to the office figure they have to take a half a day out of work anyways. So they come down, I'm going to be here for at least half the day by the time I come down here and hang out. And if, if I can get the work done, people really appreciate, appreciate the fact they don't have to come back for a second appointment. And so it really is a big practice builder. I mean, uh, I had a, a neighbor of mine. He called his dentist up, and his dentist told him, it's going to be two weeks before we can see you. So he said, hey, I'm going to – he called my office. He said, hey, look, can you see me today? Yeah, come on down. We'll see you. We'll get you in and take a look and take care of your problem. Get them stabilized. And if we can do the work that day, if, fine. If we can't, we get them stabilized and back in within a few days to get the work done that needs to be done. So it's incredibly important to have availability and be able to work your schedule so that you can get these people in in the same day. As there is a big practice builder as well. Um, that that is uh that that is just so amazing. Um, I want to go to the next thing that you're also into six one smiles because as I've traveled the planet for over half a century, what I've seen is that you know. You know, in the 1940s, 1950s, there were large families everywhere. I mean, the whole globe was having five and a half kids. And so only the rich kids got braces. Now, with birth control and and getting, the, the, the most developed countries have 80% of their people out of high school and 40% out of some college. And when they do that, their amount of babies they're making falls below the reproductive rate of 2.3 kids per family, which is what you need to maintain the herd. I mean, Japan's under one, they're like, like 0.9. Um, United States, if you backed out immigration, you would fall below the replacement rate. But now that you're having, you're waiting 10 more years to get married and only having uh, two kids instead of five, everybody can afford braces. And I, I see them in, in um, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, where people might only be making five or $6,000 a year and will spend a thousand of it on Invisalign. I mean, whiter, mm -hmm. brighter teeth. At the end of the day, you're a peacock. And when you spread out your little <laughs> deals, you're trying to survive long enough to reproduce, have offspring. And it's really hard to reproduce if you're sitting in a bar uh, with an Android phone instead of an iPhone, or you're sitting in a bar missing a tooth, or they're crowded. So whiter, brighter, sexier teeth. I'm very bullish on Align Technology stock because what Align's saying is only 5% of Americans got ortho. Now Smiles Direct's going to go public, and they're saying, well, if we drop that $6,500 price down to $2,500, we think another 10 or 20% will get ortho. <laughs> what I'm telling you is that for the next century, guaranteed you're not going to live a century from today, I'm telling you the next century, whiter, brighter, sexier teeth to increase your chance of mating and reproducing and having an offspring 
um, Smiles Direct, Invisalign, all those things are big money makers. What do you think of that? Well, um, I've been a big advocate of uh, general dentists getting into it. Um, I started with uh, six months. Uh, I started with Invisalign back around 2005, and then I got into uh, six months miles. Actually, I took the, the training course at uh, Dental Town a few years ago when Ryan Swain uh, ran a course at Dental Town, and so I incorporated six months miles. As a matter of fact, I, I did a CE course there uh, for Dental Town, uh, Crooked the Straight, GP's Journey, and uh, with that, I, I talked about six months miles and Invisalign and using the lasers and CEREC to do this one case. We did a case study on this patient. A young guy in his 30s came with, with crooked, crowded teeth. And, you know, he had been to the orthodontist and he had, um, you know, thought about getting orthodontics done. But, you know, he was um, really interested in just getting his front teeth straightened. He really didn't care about his bite because he felt his bite was good. And so we looked at this case and we decided, let's go six months miles in this case because the amount of movement we have to do. And so we did that, and we um, got the case done in about nine months. We did a couple of root canals and anterior teeth. We did a couple of Cerex. Then we had to do a little phrenectomy down on the bottom um, and some gingivoplasty and some whitening. And, uh, you know, $10,000 later, the guy was as happy as, as can be. And so incorporating orthodontics in the GP practice, I think, is vitally important. As you mentioned, you get smile direct. I mean, obviously, someone did some research to realize that that is a demand today. It's a need. People want to have straight teeth. So um, it really is incumbent for, for dentists, GPs, to kind of expand their menu of services. And they do that by getting into orthodontics, starting off with Invisalign. And I, I tell docs, look, you don't need to treat every case that walks in. You take a case that could be done 12 months or less and, and get it done with an Invisalign. And you have the option of going six months miles for those cases that have maybe some more difficult movements that require that extra force to move those teeth into better positions. So I'm a big advocate for GPs doing orthodontics. Of course, you have to look at the cases. And obviously, don't go in and do an advanced case. Those cases should really be referred out to the orthodontist. And we have the luxury as GPs of cherry-picking the cases we want to do to get it done within a reasonable amount of time. And how would you, how would you recommend my homies learn six-month smiles? I mean, are you still a big fan of, uh, of six-month smiles? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of six-month smiles. I mean, I, I look at the situation. Uh, very often a patient will come in for a consultation and they'll be asking for Invisalign because that's what they know. It's, uh, Invisalign does a great job marketing. And if they want Invisalign, well obviously we talk to patients about the advantages and disadvantages of Invisalign. I mean obviously the Invisalign allows people to um, get their teeth straight. It's clear, comfortable, and removable. And of course the big question is removable. Uh, how dedicated that people are going to use and be to wearing these aligners and we have people come in and they're not so dedicated and so their treatment never gets finished and so we really try to have people realize uh, that maybe a six-month smile option is better for them because it's kind of a no-brainer you just wear the appliance and it gets the teeth straight you don't have to worry about uh, not wearing the appliance so I try to steer people into what I think is best or most appropriate because I want to treat these cases quickly. I don't want to get into a case that's more than 12 months because then it becomes the issue of, is it more, is it not, does not no longer become cost effective for me to treat a case if it goes more than 12 months. You have to look at, you know, chair time and, and, and cost and, and involved with doing the case. So six months mile definitely has a, um, a place especially even cases that uh, have teeth that uh, have a lot of rotations and need a lot of uh, movement. Um, six month smiles is huge. And let, let me tell you something about ortho. I mean, the, the patients paying for, I mean, the reason parents pay for ortho is because, you know, the, the kid, I mean, the kid came out of you. So when you're a mom mm -hmm. and you're, you're walking through, you know, Walmart and your kid looks like he can eat corn on the beef, uh, corn on the cob through a chain link fence. I mean, you look like, you know, the, the you, someone shouldn't have bred with you. And so they're cleaning them up so they can get married and reproduce that offspring. And the midline in the bite is secondary to the, the way the human wants it to look. And I'll tell you what, I cannot tell you how many dinners I have sat out with orthodontists. Cause remember I own ortho town, the website and the magazine, and I'll say the word, I'll get the wife's midline. I'll look at her, talk to her enough to know right where it is. And then I'll tell the wife, look away from her husband. Where is your own wife's midline? And there's like, ah, uh, uh, 
<laughs> and and they don't even know. And it's like, okay, you married this woman and you reproduce and have offspring. You have three kids with a woman and you're an orthodox. You don't know where the midline is. And so it's not the midline. And unless it's some Tom Cruise freak thing where it's sitting off, you know, several degrees. It's just not noticeable. They just want whiter, right. brighter, sexier teeth. They just want to smile right. and reflect a bunch of light. And that you like right. it, and, and I, I, I think it's big money. Um, if you're following me on uh, Twitter, I know you're driving to work, so you can't take notes. So when, uh, so I just uh, uh, retweeted, uh, I just reposted uh, uh, um, Dr. Paul Castle's last two continuing education courses and his uh, in his Twitter. Uh, an email, and then I also did six months smiles, so you can see that. So you're just saying that you need to call six months smiles, and they are going to show you uh, where their courses are. Uh, you have to take a course with six months smiles to to get certified. But where would I get that? I see on their website how it works, cost stories, find a doctor. Where would I find on their website where the courses are? The courses, yeah. Um, you have to go to the you have to go to Six Month Smile um, website. Yeah, I'm on to get it. The courses, okay. And there should be something on there that tells you exactly where it is. They have them in different cities. And by the way, the, the Six Month Smiles they're using the numeral six, so it's numeral six month smile. Mm -hmm. It's not S I X month smile. Uh, free practice yeah. assessment. Get trained. Okay, I'll click get trained. Um, I, I still, uh, okay. So let's talk about, okay. So here's where they are. They're in Scottsdale, right up street from me uh, and January 25th. They're in new Orleans, March 8th, uh, colony, Texas, February 8th, Las Vegas, Jan February 22nd, new Orleans in March, Orlando, March 22nd, Bethesda, April 8th. Um, so, uh, they got lots of training, but I, I always thought ortho was the biggest land brunt because an ortho case is. Forty-five hundred to sixty-five hundred dollars. So if you took a five thousand, mm -hmm. like Richard Litt is the only board-certified orthodontist I know. Um, he taught at UAP for a decade, or no, University of California, San Francisco, uh, for a decade as the chairman of the ortho department. Then he went to University of Detroit. His his lectures called Force Faculty Orthodontic Restorative Service Whatever. Um, he teaches his whole course is like four three-day weekends for five grand, and I'm like, dude, if you took that. When you graduate, you do one class, you got your money back. How do you not make, <laughs> same thing with learning in Invisalign, getting Invisalign certified. I mean, why would you not do that? Or six month smiles. I mean, orthodontics is one of those deals where you can go to any of their training courses and get all your right. statement of cash flow money back the same month you paid the tuition. Correct or false? Exactly. You go with the Exactly. Example. Yeah. So, uh, and, 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 and I think you're going to be, a high volume, low price, uh, if you're just competing on price and insurance and convenience. But if you want to be a lower margin, uh, I mean, I mean, a lower volume and a higher price, you yourself, Doc, you got to become a Tom Brady of the New England Patriots, a Drew Brees of New Orleans, an Eli Manning of the Giants, a Ben Rossenberg of the Pittsburgh, an Andrew Luck of Indianapolis, and Aaron Rodgers of Green Bay. Um, how would you recommend, I, I think of you, I mean, I mean, Paul, you are the Tom Brady dentist of Boston, and I've known that for 30 years. <laughs> I've followed your 3,000 posts. No, really, you're a legend. You'll always be a legend in my mind in so many townies. How would that young kid become... Uh, a Tom Brady, a Drew Brees, a Paul Cassell. Would you recommend the Scottsdale Institute? Would you recommend the Ross Nash, Panky, Spear? Um, who's my Greek buddy in uh, Seattle? I love him the most. Um, who's Kois? Kois, right, whenever Kois, you meet yeah. Kois, well, he's 100% Greek. So watch the Big Fat Wedding. Then I go up to him and say, John, do you recommend spraying <laughs> Windex in the crown? Before? Did you ever see that movie? Yes, I did. Remember the Windex <laughs> guy? And, and you might yeah. be afraid that if you said that, you would offend him, but he laughed so hard on that joke. He likes Greek jokes. But how would you recommend? I mean, she's listening to you right now. She's on her way. She's an hour commute to go work at Aspen. And someday she wants mm -hmm. to own her own place and be like you. How does she become mm -hmm. a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees? Well, first you have to find um, a good office to, to buy or start up. And then you have to figure out what your patients want. The first question is, what do your patients want? What do they need? You have to listen. I mean, obviously, you have the basics. You have you know, the intro camera. You have all the other stuff you have. And then you have to decide, okay, um, 
if you have a lot of crowns coming in and so forth, you have to think about, well, does CERC make sense for me? What's my return on investment? And what do I have to do to make it pay off? You see a lot of soft tissue cases. Um, how much am I referring out on, on a uh, monthly basis? And so you have to start somewhere. And once you find out what your patients want, you can decide, okay, do I go to, do I do go to Panky? Do I go to these other areas to, to get the additional training that I need? It's all a question of what your patients need and where you're at and what kind of practice philosophy do you have. So first you have to figure out what's your vision for the future. I think you know, young dentist has a kind of map that out. Once he gets or she gets you know, a sense of, you know, their community, what do my patients want and meet their needs? But more importantly, you have to really devote the time and energy into learning whatever you're going to learn. Uh, I've run into cases where people just tend to collect technology. You walk into an office, they have the cervic and a corner, they have a, a laser over here, and they have, you know, this over here. And, and, and you walk in, you ask, hey, doc, you use that much? No, uh, I don't. And just there's collecting dust. And so, they buy things and really <clears throat> don't devote the time. So my suggestion would be start somewhere, listen to what your patients want, and pick a technology that you like, or, and then develop that fully before you think about other things. Whether that means no, I'm going to put implants in, I'm going to do orthodontics. You have to find out what the patients need and then address that need by getting whatever training you need. And who's the CEO of Six Month Smiles now? Um, it was started by Ryan Swain. Yeah, he sold out to a company, and um, I don't know who's in charge at that point. At this point, uh, they have a dental director who's a dentist. Who's the dental director? And, uh, I don't know his name, but um, oh, CEO, CEO. Here I found it. Perry S. Lowe, CEO, Six One Smiles. Um, are you friends with with him? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know the gentleman, but um, they're out of uh, the colony, Texas. Six month smiles. Um, interesting, um, but yeah. So, um, so you'd recommend six month smiles, ortho, lasers, CAD CAM. You'd recommend all those. Yeah, Invisalign as well too. Yeah, Invisalign. I want to say another genius thing about you. Following your post for a long time, um, <clears throat> one of the easiest ways to go from a high volume, low margin PPOs, Medicaid, is instead of just the patient comes in and points to a tooth and it's broke and or it hurts and you do one tooth dentistry, you first evolve into, well, gosh, if I'm gonna have this whole quadrant numb, let's do the whole quadrant. And then you get a little faster, easier, better. And then you say, well, God, let's just do the right side. If you're gonna be in here, let's do the right side. And then you eventually realize that the oral surgeon in your own zip code for his entire life, numbed up all four quadrants and did the whole mouth. And that when people have a bypass, they don't go in and have the left side of their heart done. They go back <laughs> six weeks later and get the right side. And then you eventually get to just full mouth dentistry where the dentist works Monday through Thursday at five. And Fridays are knocked off usually just because that's when an anesthesiologist comes in, he's board certified, puts someone to sleep. They do the whole dang mouth. And on these big mm -hmm. cases, a lot of dentists, they don't want to do they don't want to do, come in and do three molar root canals. So they'll get some board certified endodontist and then you know, maybe they live in Phoenix, they'll get one to come up from Tucson or Flagstaff and come in and do three molar root canals in a row. And then when that's done, then the, they'll have a periodontist come in and place the implants. And a lot of these dentists that are doing a 25 to 35, $40,000 case every Friday, they're not even doing the dentistry. They're having specialists come in and do the endo and the implants and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but um, but the but in order to do that, you have to present the treatment and ask the close. And you have been a big fan in Toastmasters, and I and that is just so genius because if you can't talk to a person and get them quickly to trust you, explain what you're doing with digital photography and troll cameras or panos. I love the panos. Anybody tells me a CBCT is the greatest invention in dental radiology, I tell them they're an idiot because when you show a CBCT to a bunch of dentists, half the dentists don't even know what they're looking at. But when you show a pano <laughs> to a patient, first thing they say is, 
Is that R? Is that the right side? The greatest invention in dental radiology was whoever figured out the R on one side, the L on the other. <laughs> and if you can show them that panel and that patient gets it. And if you can show some intro camera photos or digital photography and you can talk to the patient and get them to say, yes, let's fix up my whole mouth and, and I'm not going to have you pay $25,000 a day because that's not how you buy your cars. You buy your car in a monthly payment. And, um, and so we can do everything you said, everything we talked about, we can do for $220 a month for the next 60 months. You want to come in Friday, be put to sleep, do the whole damn case. So tell us about your journey with Toastmasters International. And do you think it increased your case presentation? Well, yeah, I mean, um, the great thing about Toastmasters is, is that it allows you to develop a skill set. That skill set is talking to complete strangers, to a room of full complete strangers. And very often you have, uh, you learn uh, presentation techniques that help you be more effective in your communications. Not only that too, they have these um, topics that come up and you have to kind of think on your feet which is also very helpful because how many times we'll, we'll see a patient and you never know what the patient is going to say to you or what they're going to present you with. And so you have to be quick on your feet to give them a good answer to any questions they may have. So it's, it's useful training for people who don't like to talk. I mean, you hear about cases or situations where a dentist will walk into the operatory and they say, hi, how are you? And never really connect with the patient. And I think, Connection is so incredibly important. If you want to build trust within a patient, you have to connect with them in some type of level. And Toastmasters allows you to make that connection. They train you as part of their training to make connection with your audience. Um, why audiences enjoy having you speak or anyone speak is because you make a connection with, with the audience. They can understand what you're saying to them because they can relate to the stories you tell them. And the same thing with patients. You know, you got to find out where the patients are coming from. You don't walk in and tell the patient, look, that's going to be a $5,000 case. Uh, yeah, you can show them a couple of pictures and so forth. And they say, well, yeah, doc, I don't know. I got to think about it. Well, what do you have to think about exactly? Because you haven't taken the time to really understand what patients needs, what they want. You don't know what else is going on in their life. Maybe their kid's getting braces right now. Maybe the kid's out doing soccer. And so when you deal with families, it's really helpful to kind of get a feel for what the patients are feeling, connect with them so that you can build that level of trust. Because people buy on trust, as you mentioned before, people buy on trust. So they trust you and they will eventually get the treatment done. Maybe not today, but you're laying the groundwork for that, for that purchase later on. And I'll tell you, Toastmasters is just a must to do it. If you're shy. Uh, if you're shy and you don't and you're you're not going to lead your team and you're not going to lead your case presentation if you just can't stand up and and talk you just need to learn that skill set another one is the Dale Carnegie uh, clubs they have these Dale Carnegie clubs uh, another one is uh, um um uh, who's Harvey McKay uh, swim with the sharks not eating alive he he sold Manila envelopes. Well, mm -hmm. there's no way I can have an advantage of selling a plain manila of this other guy where they all look the same. They're all the same price. Mm -hmm. So he had these 62 things where all of his salesmen, every time I called on Paul, I'd answer one of these 62 mm -hmm. things like, is he married? Is he single? What's his favorite sports team? Mm -hmm. And eventually they would develop a relationship with you. So you'd be buying all Harvey McKay's white um, manila envelopes instead of everyone mm -hmm. else's. And and another one in these big towns like, like Tempe, um, has a comedy club. I, I went to that school. It was three nights a yeah. week for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Then they had an improv and then they had mm -hmm. another one. But those are just great structural things. It's like a comedian. When a comedian walks on stage and I, I've been, I've done a hundred venues on stand up. I mean, you have mm -hmm. one minute max before you're booed off mm -hmm. the stage. They don't like you. So you got, you got to go in there and you got to enter. And you just got to enter and hit it, and and it, and until you can do it. And like I say, you don't even have to do the dentistry. Rick Rick Workman owns 850 dental offices, and he doesn't and doesn't do dentistry. You can the the biggest value is presenting and selling the case. And then, in fact, I know some dental offices, many dental offices, where the head dentist. All he does is a new patient emergency exams and the recall exams. And then he has associates, periodontists, endodontists come in doing all the clinical dentistry. And a lot of times it started with a, a problem, like um, maybe they lost an eye or they got tremors or a, a health issue forced mm -hmm. them away from mm -hmm. clinical. 
And they thought, well, hell, the clinical, that's not even where the value is anyway. You, you can hire mm. 4,000 endodontists to do a molar root canal. You can hire 10,000 orthodontists to do braces. Mm. But what you can't do is set up good demographics, get a patient to come in, explain to them with photography and radiology what they need. They trust you. You bring in installment credit. You close the deal. And then voila, well, then let anybody fill the order. So... Paul, um, I can't believe we went over an hour. Is there anything we didn't talk about today that you wanted to talk about? No, I um, I think we covered all the areas. And, um, you know, I see my uh, mission at this point going out and trying to educate young dentists to think like a business person, you know, look at things and, and, and understand what it takes to run a business. And then three things that you need to have run a business is you have to have a great staff. And you have to have a process for hiring people. You just don't hire people like you used to back in the old days, back in the 1970s and 80s. It's more of a process today. And the, the more you go through that process, the more uh, likely you are to have a person who is going to be a good uh, team member. And then you have to look at technology. You have to look and see what technology that um, works for you. I mean, uh CEREC and CAD CAMs work for me ext extremely well. Lasers have been extremely well, as well as orthodontics. Those are three areas that um, I've introduced to my office over the years, and it's really helped me become more successful. And then finally, it comes down to management. You know, what reports and things you need to, to, <clears throat> to look at. You know, we mentioned it earlier in our discussion about, you know, how much it costs you to run your office per day? What do I need to produce just to break even? How much does it cost me to open my office? And docs have to look at that. <clears throat> And if you're thinking about getting into an insurance plan, taking an insurance plan, it's a cost effective to, to, to have that plan. I mean, I've gone to offices in, in Pennsylvania and some of the plans are so, so poor in reimbursements that you question whether or not it's really cost effective to, to have that plan as part of your um, product mix. So you have to look at these things and, and make decisions as far as the business aspect of your office and create a vision for your for your office and that means thinking strategically i mean it's it's impossible to put in you know all this technology at one time you have to phase it in based upon what your patients want and that's so incredibly important and also important to have consistency in, in your operation uh, it's important to have consistency because that consistency uh, allows your patients to feel confident that you know what you're doing your staff knows what they're doing and with that confidence comes a level of trust that they build in your team as well as yourself, the dentist. And so they're more likely to follow your your recommendations going forward. And so it's it's three key points that you know every dental office has to really incorporate and keep keep in mind. And I, I look forward to helping dentists uh, achieve those uh, goals and come up with a action plan for the future. Well, uh, yeah, you said so many genius things there. I mean, that, that was uh, amazing. Um, I, I can't tell you how uh, much I agree with you. Um, just God, get the right team, get the right court. Make, make yourself a Drew Brees. Make yourself go get the skills. Um, and, and, if, and if you're not interested in doing that, then you got to start doing a higher uh, volume, lower margin. And, and, and it all, whether you're making a McDonald's or a steakhouse, both are business models, both can win. You just gotta decide what you wanna be. Do you wanna be a McDonald's, um, in and out burger, or do you wanna be a steakhouse? There's no right or wrong, it just is what it is. Right. And it depends on your demographics. I mean, I wouldn't wanna have a Mercedes Benz dealership uh, in a small town in Beeville, Texas. Them rednecks <laughs> want a F-150 Ford and they don't right. like foreign cars. And then, you know, if you're in LA or Hollywood, it could be completely the opposite. Just know your people, Absolutely. know your market, get great. Hey, are you going to townie meeting? Uh, I don't think I can make it this year. Oh man, I'll tell you what, I can't believe it. It's gonna be our 20th annual townie meeting. Can you believe that, wow. that I'm so damn old? Uh, that we're having our uh, 20th <laughs> meeting. I can't I can't believe it. But uh, hey, thanks for all that you've done for Dentaltown. If it wasn't for guys like you that became members, your, your Dentaltown deal says that you became a member in 2001 and that was only because that was when we added the feature of tracking the members. I think you were, we opened it. We started programming in 98. We got to open on St. Patrick's Day, 99. And uh, you were one of the first 100. So thank you, Paul. Uh, for all okay. that you've done for me personally, for Dental Town, I just think you're right. a hell of a guy. Thanks for being the Tom Brady of dentistry for Boston. All right, thanks so much, Howard.